What's going on everybody? So today we've got a little bit of a different video and this is going to be somewhat of a reaction to a realization I've had that you guys in the community are so great. I've had so many people reaching out offering help on the roster on draft classes, which is just fantastic. It really shows everyone's passion for franchise mode and it makes what I do uh, feel appreciated, which is is fantastic. The problem is there is a bit of a disconnect in that everything I do on the, the rosters and the draft classes, for one, I need to keep all of the ratings consistent so that the incoming rookies play just like you would expect the original rookies to play as. And that's not just their overall rating, it's the intrinsic ratings in between having, you know, similar caliber or catching or elusiveness or break sack or whatever it be. Uh, so there's been this disconnect, and that is what I'm hoping to bridge here in this big effort. Uh, I have created a draft creation guide, and the second big reason I'm doing this is, well, to be frank, EA's created custom draft classes, not created, just the, the default ones. Frankly, they ruin uh, franchise mode, especially when you're using my roster. But in general, there's just so many problems with the random generated rookies. Number one is their overalls are just too high. And I don't understand why, even if you look at the uh, vanilla roster, the rookies in the vanilla roster, the incoming rookies in their draft classes are higher than that. Um, but then you look at the actual individual traits and a lot of the prospects are just, you know, they don't mirror what type of players you're going to see in real life. You know, you'll get players that are built like off-ball linebackers that play like edge rushers. You'll get way too many 5 foot 11 linebackers that are like first round prospects and just the, just the list goes on and on and on. And that's what this draft guide is here to help. It's not just going to be, you know, a lifesaver if you're using my roster. This is to hopefully just get really good custom draft classes out there in the community. And I frankly don't have enough time, as much time as I thought I would, to create this many classes. I'm still working on my first, uh, you know, non-real player uh, draft class here, and it's taken me a long time. I'm, I'm only just finishing it, and that's what really inspired this guide right here. So before we get into the guide, I just want to say thank you to everyone that is going to take this and run with it. I'm actually expecting... A decent amount, and I tweeted this thing out, and I already got a few people that are like, all right, I'm already starting to work on it, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, the dream here would be to just have like 20, 30 people out there making really good quality draft classes so you can have diversified classes as you play franchise mode five, six plus years in. Uh, you know, that would be a dream come true. And even beyond that, an even bigger dream would be EA actually sees this thing and is like, oh, that actually looks pretty good. Maybe we should actually implement this to the game so we don't have to ask this basically free labor of like 20 people in our community. Uh, and it will also goes to show you that people really care about franchise mode and are really passionate about fixing this thing. Um, so those are the reasons for doing this thing. If you do make a draft class, Put the uh, hashtag TFG draft in there just as kind of a tag in the description uh, or in or in the uh, the title. It doesn't really matter. That way people can search TFG draft and know that they're getting a draft class uh, that's going to be used using this model. And then when I get around to it, if you finish your class, uh, either tag me on Twitter or put in the description here that you're done and when I get around to it I will go and th go through and look at it and see that it it does kind of work everything that everything was done correctly uh, if there's a few tweaks I'll let you know that some things need to be changed or uh, I might just you know do it myself send it back to you we'll see um, and then the idea is in this draft guide which is a Google Doc um, I will create a section for approved classes and everyone can kind of go there and see uh, where you're going to get a list of approved classes. So that's the explanation. Let's get into it here, into the draft, the TFG draft creation guide. Uh, we got to start with some overall philosophy things here. Um, so I'll just kind of scroll through this thing and talk through it. And this is going to be more of a surface level video. If, if I were to go through every single explanation here, this would be a massive video that, that I don't know if I could put out. So uh, the idea is this gives you kind of a surface level explanation of this stuff. And then if you are taking this serious, I would hope you're, you're thoroughly reading through it. And then once you get through your first class, you're going to kind of get a feel for how I'm, you know, rating these players. And you should be able to just kind of run with it at that point. 
Uh, so you'll see the individual ratings I put on a one to seven scale. That's it's kind of similar to the way a lot of uh, NFL scouts uh, do their scale. It's actually I think one to eight usually is what you'll see. Uh, I just used one to seven, um, but that's just you know a, a scaling system. So when you see a uh, a scale on a one to seven, that's that's what that means. Uh, development traits. So there's really no correct answer here. People always ask me about this. Uh, the number one thing I will say is I do believe that the superstar development for incoming rookies is a little overpowered. I would use that sparingly. I would honestly say leave it out of your classes. Um, you know, there there might be one or maybe two like entering a class that are that should be superstars that project to be like a 95 after the first year because at that age the XP required with that development trait to get to a 95 after the first season is not very much. So I mean like a Saquon Barkley type of player, sure, maybe superstar, but I would probably say just leave superstar out. You're going to have about seven to 12 stars sprinkled throughout. You know, the majority of those should be first rounders. You're going to mix in some quick and, and star throughout the class, but most of the high developing players are going to be first, sec first, second round players. And then, uh, the other thing I mentioned is, you know, you might have a guy in the fifth round who enters as a higher overall in terms of the range, um, but that might be because he's a more polished player. But you can enter as a, a better player and not necessarily develop very well. You know, say like a, a slower linebacker might be better in, in run defense, um, but, you know, he might not necessarily devo develop in coverage. So just because you make a guy a quote-unquote steal in the fifth round because his overall is higher than the people in that range, you're probably going to want to give the quick or star devs to more athletic, younger players that have an actual chance to develop into elite-level players. Um, so that kind of explains my, my thinking on development traits. You know, 75% of the players should be about normal. And then, like I said, about 7 to 13 with star and then the remainder of those, about 20% of the class, should have quick development. Uh, and then as far as other traits go, I left this out of the guide uh, because you guys are smart. You know, definitely think about these and you'll get a feel for it as you go. Uh, and just use your head. Like, you know, the better quarterbacks will have the, the better traits for a quarterback. If you're making a good speed rusher, he should have the good pass rushing moves. You know, if you're making a, a defensive tackle, maybe give him bull rush if he's got good power moves. You know, just just play this thing just play this thing out. If you got a good playmaker on the defensive side, make sure he's got strip ball, aggressive catch. You know, just kind of think about it. I, I left it out of the guide because it would have just been too much. Um, but you guys are smart. You know football. Use your head when you're when you're doing the other traits outside of development traits. And then with age, this is really important. You know, it's kind of all over the place with the EA classes. Uh, in the first round, especially the freak athletes coming out of big schools, you know, these guys more often than not are 20, 21 years old, definitely no older than 22. You know, if they're a, a real gem of a prospect, they're coming out as soon as they're eligible. They're not waiting until their redshirt senior year. But as you move on in the draft, you know, you're going to get those redshirt players that came on late. You're going to get those guys that aren't those superstar athletes that stayed in school because they weren't sure about their draft stock. And then undrafted players, for sure, you're going to be looking 22 to 24 years old. Um, but yeah, earlier in the class, you're going to get uh, bigger schools uh, as we move into this point here. And then as you move on, I like to sprinkle in some small schools, but it is mostly D1 throughout the draft. Once you get into undrafted players, you're going to start sprinkling in your Liberties and Fort Hayes or whatever it is. Um, and then this is huge right here, archetypes. So this is a big thing because EA's classes, like I said, the players are kind of all over the place and they frankly don't really look like real prospects should coming out. They're just kind of, to me, they feel like more of a random dump of attributes as opposed to a well thought out kind of, you know, layout of what, what type of archetypes you're seeing. And this is more, frankly, speaking about probably second rounders and beyond. Usually, if you're a scout, you're saying this guy is like this. He he fits into this archetype. He's gonna be he's gonna have these strengths and these weaknesses. Obviously, you're gonna have first round players that transcend these archetypes and are just gonna be you know total studs that could fit into multiple archetypes. 
And the beauty thing here, the beautiful thing here is EA has a good archetype system now, uh, but they just didn't implement it into their draft classes, I feel like. These, these players just, they're all over the place. Uh, so basically when you're creating a player outside of the first round, the first round you can really have some creativity and, and have some fun with it and use my rating scale uh, to determine what types of traits they want to be elite at. But then when you're, when you're making players beyond that, and that's going to be the large majority of your work is creating those uh, later round prospects. Uh, because I am asking that you edit every single player in the draft uh, to get an approved uh, TFG draft here. So basically you're going to look at a certain archetype. And you know I'll, I'll pan over to, say, the running backs here. And we'll, we'll come back to this. But, you know, okay, this running back, we're going to make him a one-cut guy. So he's going to be in that six to one, six foot one to two hundred and ten pound range. Uh, you know he's he's going to have a, this was a bad one to pick because I, I said uh, C notes, but uh, like I say here, he's going to have he's going to be higher in speed and acceleration and stiff arm and juke, uh, but he's a little stiffer. He's he's not quite as elusive. His juke is going to be a little lower. Uh, trucking is a little lower. So I said think of like the James Starks type, and that's just an example of one player, but I would start with picking an archetype and go from there for every player you're going to edit. Uh, so we'll move on from the archetypes. We'll obviously continue to talk about that as we go on in this video. Uh, and then this is another biggie, uh, the whole dilemma with edge rusher versus interior lineman versus off ball linebacker. So for those of you that follow closely, very f uh, follow football very closely, you know that we no longer really refer to players as defensive end or outside linebacker. It really is edge rusher or interior lineman or off-ball linebacker. Unfortunately, that is not reflected in Madden. I really wish that they would change that because you'll see team computer teams just not know where to play certain players. Um, so what I do is the defensive end position is all four three ends. You will get some hybrids in there that could be three four ends or four three D tackles. You know, those Michael Bennett, Calais Campbell types. But defensive end is primarily four three edge rushers. And then defensive tackle is gonna be your three four ends or four three defensive tackles. So um, you're into your defensive lineman, I keep as all defensive tackles. And then outside linebackers are gonna be three four edge rushers. So your pass rushing uh, three, four outside linebackers that are a little quicker, a little better in coverage than your four, three defensive ends, but they're more or less the same players, maybe a little lighter. Uh, and then I also sprinkled in those kind of bandit linebackers, those basically safeties playing linebackers that are going to go in that six foot to six foot two, 215 to 225 pound range. You know, those guys aren't really playing inside linebacker if a 3-4 team drafts them. So that's going to be uh, in the 4-3 uh, outside linebacker position. And then middle linebackers are just going to be most of the linebackers, the off-ball linebackers. So that's where I, I place those um, positions. If you're unfamiliar with uh, how edge rushers and, and how these are all categories, if everything I just said is confusing you, uh, I will post a link to our rule page for our TFGO 32-man league, which I will plug right now. I will also post a link to the application for that league if you're interested in that. We only have two people on the wait list currently. Um, but in that rule book, there is an in-depth description to edge rushers and where players are expected to play. If you're going to make a draft class but that confuses you, I would recommend uh, reading through that. Uh, and then fullbacks and kickers, I didn't include in this guide. Uh, for the fullbacks, I have an H-back prototype inside the tight end category. You can look at that um, as a kind of a baseline for how these fullbacks should be rated. Um, but use your creative great creativity, I suppose, with fullbacks. And then kickers, uh, I think they're more or less okay. I would say lower their awareness uh, and increase their kick power and accuracy a little bit just based on uh, you know, I think the highest kicker on EA's roster has like 72 awareness, and most of the rookies are in the 65 to 75 range, so it's just inconsistent. I would uh, fix that. Uh, and then <laughs> a few more really important notes. These are all just big things that are, are flaws with EA's roster that we just need to really talk about as, as the primary importance of creating these classes. 
Uh, so impact blocking for defensive players. This is all over the place. It's a little better with the uh, draft classes. But, you know, I pointed out how, like, Roquan Smith, who is six foot one, 230 pounds, has, like, 85 impact blocking, which is a trait that determines how well you take on blockers, really, and stay on your feet. And then you look at Tremaine Edmonds, who <laughs> has – he's six foot five, 256, and he's got, like, 74 impact block. When they rate this, this rating all over the place, you are encouraging – uh, players to be cheesy and put basically safeties at middle linebacker against 31 personnel with three tight ends on the field and expect them to be able to play in between the trenches. That's not the case. So we need to fix impact blocking. I have a full weighted scale for height and weight and what roughly the impact blocking rating should be. Uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, actually, we'll get to that right now. Uh, so these are the last two kind of big overall overhauls that we got to talk about. Strength is completely messed up in EA's roster and in the draft classes. And I've obviously made these adjustments in my 2019 class, my 2020 class, and my roster. But height and weight need to be the primary indicator of a player's strength rating. This is one of the most mind-boggling things about EA's ratings is you'll get like... I, I want to say Byron Maxwell, who's six feet or six two, two hundred pounds. He's got like seventy nine strength, which is higher than some offensive linemen. It's higher than other six foot, two hundred pound corners. Like there's gonna be some variance if you if you got a good bench press, you know, and you are a, a good athlete at your height and weight. There will be some variance. Like you will be above average for that, but that doesn't explain a twenty. <laughs> strength difference between a player at your position that is the same height and weight. Um, and, and for this reason, you know, height and weight literally just, it doesn't matter in Madden. So this is just a, a little effort towards making height and weight more important, whether it be for those corners, for your receivers, uh, for bringing a linebacker into the box, um, for having good linemen, you know, it, it's, it's just a, a, an effort towards fixing that. So this is going to be uh, your scale and, it's going to be annoying at first, but once you kind of do 30, 40 players, you should be about in the same ballpark. And then this applies to impact blocking as well. Uh, there's your scale there. Uh, it's less important for impact blocking than strength, I would say. This is going to be the range right here that you're really focusing on. Maybe out to here for defensive backs, but really those defensive players, those uh, linebackers, nickel corners, safeties, players that, you know, if you play online, People like to bring those really fast uh, defensive backs into the box, and they will play just like super fast linebackers. It's basically like having Deion Jones in there. Well, you fix these impact blocking traits, and it's going to change some things in terms of how they're able to play in the run game. So uh, that's a lot, I know. I hope you guys are still with me here. Uh, like I said, it's a brain dump. There's a, it's a big <laughs> bridge to, to kind of bring to you my... <laughs> my evaluation technique here to you guys. Um, I also hope this is interesting, even if you aren't going to make draft classes, because this really is a lot of information for uh, how to evaluate NFL talent. Um, so let's get into the quarterbacks here. And this is where I'm going to kind of gloss through. This is where you guys are really going to have to, you know, read through and, and as you're making the players, check out all of these different uh, kind of sliders, I guess, or whatever you want to call them. Um, but the overall range for quarterbacks basically as we go through the position i'll just talk about the big flaws with those position with the uh with the ea draft classes and make sure that those are fixed and then the rest of it i'll leave up to you guys so quarterbacks uh, they're they're fine the the overalls are simply too high you know you're gonna get like five or six quarterbacks a year that are 70 plus to put that in perspective i've got a 71 on justin herbert who is a lower level first round prospect but he is going to be the highest rated quarterback in the 2019 class. And, you know, I, I just think, I don't think, I know that based on my ratings, uh, the, the rookie quarterbacks for the EA classes are just too high. So a top five pick is going to be 75 to 80. I wouldn't go any higher than 80 personally for a rookie. You know, uh, Sam Darnold was, uh, whether I was right or wrong, was the highest grade I had 
on a quarterback since Andrew Luck. Uh, and I've only been doing this like for real for about three years. So if I was taking it seriously in the uh, some other classes, who knows? But I know that I would have had a super high grade on Andrew Luck. Uh, so Darnold was like a 76. Uh, 76.6, I think, is, is my official grade on him. So your true freak, like Andrew Luck caliber guy should be like an 80. Uh, and then here's kind of the range. You know, about 11 to 13 drafted probably about 17 to 20 total players at the position. I think they make a a few too many quarterbacks, so you can make them tight ends or or kickers or punters, whatever you deem necessary. Uh, I guess I'll go through the archetypes. So you're going to have your scramblers. We're seeing a lot of these now. The more undersized, uh, obviously Baker Mayfield leading the charge on this, but you got guys like Mackenzie Milton now, obviously Will Greer this year. So these are going to be smaller, quicker guys. Definitely good acceleration, good agility. They're going to be, uh, as you can see, in that four to seven range, which is going to leave them, uh, you know, seventy-seven to all the way up to like a ninety. Uh, and you might have your uh, your super athletic quarterbacks as well, the Russell Wilsons, who are going to have that eighty-five speed. But these are more for the shorter Baker Mayfield, Will Greer types, who are going to be in that seventy-eight to 82 range their throw power is going to be a little lower i know baker has a good arm at his size but this is in general what you're seeing from this uh this type of players and baker of course is a first round prospect would come into the uh the the type of player that you're not looking at these archetypes you might use them as a barrier for entry but you might look at him and say okay he's going to fit these but we're going to give him six throw power or 94 to 95 uh That's what you're going to do for first-round players. Uh, So then you've got the pocket passers. These are going to be your slower, big, more traditional NFL bodies. Uh, Mike White, uh, Rudolph, uh, you know, bigger, slower, tend to be more accurate, better arm, probably a higher break sack rating. Um, Yeah, so we'll move on from that. And then just balanced. They'll be in between. A little more athletic than a pocket passer, a little better arm than a scrambler. Uh, just might not have more of an elite arm or a elite mobility. And then running back, uh, this is the most broken position in EA's classes, in my opinion. They're straight up not fun. Like, they're too slow. They're, they're too big. The, their ratings are all over the place. You never get those quick, you know, receiving backs, the Tariq Cohen or Theo Riddick types. Like, it's just a lane. Like, it's just bad. It's just a random dumping of attributes. You know, you should have big bruisers for sure. There are a ton of these in EA's classes already. Great. But then you should have balanced guys who are actually athletic in this range of, you know, 90 to 92. Your Joe Mixons, Kareem Hunt's going in the second, third round. Receiving backs. There's some of these every year. We had Naheem Hines this year, Tariq Cohen last year, your Theo Riddick types who are later round prospects but are really quick and fun to use in Madden and have good juking. You know, they're just non-existent. You'll get fast running backs, but like they they can have like 60 elusiveness and are like 82 agility. Like no, that player does not exist. That's a like a, a punt specialist. <laughs> like why is that a running back prospect? Uh, and then your one cut guys. These are a little more rare, but you know I think of like Jeremy Langford or James Starks if you're familiar with those players. A little stiffer, but once they get going. They're pretty hard to stop. They got good. They're longer, lengthier guys. So they've got good stiff arms. They accelerate well, but they're just not very quick. They're not really gonna make you miss. Uh, and then your speed backs. This is more of a rare type, um, but I had to include them. So this is gonna be uh, kind of like Bryce Love coming out fits in this category. Think of like Lashawn McCoy would be in here. Ronald Jones, I would say, was a speed back. Uh, a little smaller, you know, Aaron Jones would be another one that fits in this category. A little smaller, but really explosive. You're going to have this elite range here for speed to acceleration. I'm um, not necessarily going to have the power, uh, but, you know, that those are going to be mostly first, second, third round prospects. You might have a guy like Aaron Jones fall to the fifth or the sixth round, uh, give him like lower injury, or yeah, you know, lower his injury. Uh, like I said, I did not say this, but I think it's in here somewhere. If you're going to have a gem later in the draft, he shouldn't just be a 76 overall star dev with no problems. You know, he should have some problems. Maybe he's got low carrying or he's got injury problems or, you know, 
whatever. There's going to be a problem with a steal in those later rounds. There's usually a reason a guy falls, and then he may overcome those when he gets to the next level, but you're not getting perfect prospects fall to the sixth round. So do keep that in mind as you make those late round steals. Uh, So let's move on to wide receivers. Wide receivers are, are okay. In general, they're they're too slow. You're gonna see most of the receivers are coming in here, and you'll notice, you know, it, it's just bumped up for me. Uh, so you're gonna have, you know, I won't go through all these every position. You you can see these as you make your classes. But in general, the receivers are too big for EA. There's way too many like six foot six players. But even those players don't make a whole lot of sense. Um, and then the run block rating is absurdly high. I want to say the highest run block rating for a player in EA's roster is Larry Fitzgerald or Juju with like 64 or 65. And that's like average for their rookies. It's ridiculous. So you're going to want to lower the run block and, and just think about height weight for run block. So those six foot six receivers, if you make them, uh, these are going to be much more rare using this guide than they should be. Like, think of Jaleel Scott he was drafted by the Ravens I think in the fifth round like that's what this red zone threat should be that six foot five six foot six uh, low agility player you know Jaleel Scott was a a weird type of prospect Um, and there's probably 20 percent of the receivers in every class coming to that archetype they should mostly be balanced receivers you know they should have 90 89 speed Decent agility, good acceleration, balanced route running. It's just all over the place. Uh, The receivers, every position. If you can't tell by the tone of my voice, I'm very frustrated with how the EA classes work. Uh, Then you're going to have deep threats, and these are going to range. There's smaller guys like T.Y. Hilton who maybe have lower release but are going to be super fast. Both of the deep threats should be very fast. But then you'll also have like Equinemia St. Brown, who's 6'5", really good speed. But if you're going to make those guys and make them later round prospects, they should have lower agility, um, maybe poor catching. You know, you can figure it out. Uh, Obviously, you got to be careful when you're making this type because this is going to be the most desired uh, type of receiver in Madden the high speed, high release type of player. And then you got slot guys, and I don't think they'd make slot receivers correctly. They should have good agility for sure, good acceleration. They're going to be lower in speed, but high catching traffic, really good elusiveness, juking, you know, you're, you're, think of like your typical, like Julian Edelman or um, <laughs> Jameson Crowder, you know, you're crafty, inside slot guys that are not going to have good release, not good running deep, aren't going to have the best uh, spectacular catches or anything, but are just, you know, scrappy. Um, Tight ends, they do a decent job with tight ends. Uh, They probably make a few too many, but you're going to have your balanced guys and you can follow uh, my breakdown of of what their traits should be. You'll have receiving guys who are really bad blockers, um, but are are faster, better route runners. That's going to be like your Evan Ingram types. Uh, so do make sure you give them poor blocking because Evan Ingram is is very rarely used as an inline tight end, and when he does, he does not block very well. And then you'll have more blocking specific types. These guys are going to be later rounds, fifth to seventh round undrafted guys, who really are slow, not the best hands, but are going to block well. And then H back is essentially a fullback, but I do make a few tight ends that are kind of fullback tight end hybrids. And then linemen, I cannot stress how ridiculously overpowered O-linemen are in EA's classes. And it's even more inexcusable when you look at their roster. The only consistent thing with my roster in EA is EA has actually recognized that offensive line depth and overall talent is very down right now in the NFL. But then to have rookies that you're getting like, I'm not even kidding you, 45 linemen a year that will come in and be automatic starters. How many rookies are starting and playing at a high level in the NFL right now on the offensive line? Five? Ten? Like, this is the hardest position to draft. If drafting linemen was as easy as EA makes it in their custom or their basic rosters, classes, I'm struggling, then every NFL team would have no problem building an offense. Like, the best teams have good line, good lines, and the teams without lines are suffering right now. So, just... 
take your time with these. I mean, linemen are going to be very, very low. You know, you're going to get a few first and second rounders, 70 and above, but you're going to struggle after that. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, 66 to a 68. Um, and they're players that may start when they come in, but it's way too easy to, to grab 76 overall guards in the fifth round on EA's roster. Like Will Hernandez was my second guard in this class and he was a 76. So like, and you can just grab those at will in EA's roster. So, um, tackles, guards, centers, uh, you, what else do we have to talk about? You're going to make a few of these. This is kind of the modern tackle here, the, the finesse blocker. So these are going to be undersized guys. Whoops. Think of like Brian O'Neill or um, I'm spacing out his name, but the tackle that uh, the Raiders took in the first round. It's a new archetype that we're seeing more of is the really athletic, taller tackle. So they're going to have good speed and acceleration, like actually in this like, you know, 70 to low 80 range. Well, not 80 speed, but for acceleration. Um, and then their pass block is going to be a little higher, especially that pass block finesse. Um, but then you're going to notice they're really bad run blockers. They need to develop how to play with leverage. Uh, and then you got your your typical big maulers, your Phil Lodehalt types, and then the more balanced. And that pretty much applies all throughout for tackles, guards, and centers. Uh, so we'll move on. In general, you just got to nerf the hell out of those positions. Uh, and then for edge rushers, uh, these are done pretty well other than I would say you know, think about what I said about, um, you know, you're going to create defensive ends and outside linebackers here for edge rushers. Um, you're going to have the occasional, uh, actually more often than not, you will have a top five pick being an edge rusher. It's just a, a, a premier position. Uh, so you're going to have your four, three speed edge rushers. These are going to be pass rushers, lower block shed, um, but good athletes, um, and good pass rushing moves. Pretty much the same thing with three, four outside linebackers. They're just going to be slightly smaller, as you can see, which is going to give them slightly less, whoops, uh, slightly less strength. Uh, and then you're going to have your hybrid guys. These are going to be typically, unless you're creating a freak in like the top 10 round, uh, top 10 picks, uh, like uh, uh, what's his name for the 49ers? Buckner was a, a hybrid freak. Uh, so you are going to have the occasional freak in the early rounds. But after that, it's typically going to be fourth, fifth, sixth round. These kind of this first and second down run defending four, three defensive ends that would probably be a D end in a three, four, probably a D tackle as well on third down. Um, and, you know, you can get kind of creative here. Some of these will be better pass rushers, like better power moves. Uh in general, a note would be the taller guys, like the six foot seven pass rushers. I tend to give less power moves because the ability to make a bull rush, other than like your Khalil Mack, like stiff arm, like obviously you can have a good, a good power move as a taller guy. But Khalil Mack actually is only like six four, so maybe I take that back. Um, leverage is super important for power rushers. And when you're that tall, it's hard to play with leverage. So the taller guys tend to be more finesse to me, uh, on the edge at least. Uh, and then the, the shorter guys, a little more power. Uh, defensive tackle, uh, not a whole lot to mention here. They do D tackles pretty well. Um, yeah, really not much to say about D tackles. You guys can follow the guide here. Uh, and then linebackers, this is going to be interesting. Um so you're basically making all these guys as middle linebackers. I did mention the kind of hybrid safety type that we're making as outside linebackers. So in general, my linebackers look a hell of a lot different than the garbage ones that EA makes. For one, I don't know why, but the height for these guys is absurdly low. Like you get five foot ten, five foot eleven linebacker prospects that are 255 pounds. Find me a player that exists like that. Like Bam Bradley? No, he's like 230, I think. Like, come on, no, that doesn't exist. So you're going to have to completely overhaul the height and weight. Most linebackers are going to be about 6'1", between 6'1 and 6'4", and about 225 to 245. You'll get some guys outside of that range. But that's for the most part. For the balance, you can follow you know, the chart here. 
I, these four three outside linebackers, they're going to be fast, man. They're going to be fun to use in Madden. But the thing is, those players exist. You can find these guys in the free agency pool. These are actually often lower drafted players because they're basically safeties. But like I said, if you're making these players, give them low impact block. I'm serious. Otherwise, they are total freaks, and there's no reason you wouldn't use this player. Um, and low block shed, like 64 block shed. Like they are not going to play well inside the tackles, but they're going to cover well. Uh, and then run stopping guys, just bigger than average, worse in coverage, a little slower, but better block shed, better tackle, that kind of stuff. Uh, I think I like Blake Martinez for that one. Uh, and then cornerbacks, corners are a joke in EA's classes. They're just so slow. Like I've taken first round cornerbacks with like 86 speed. Like what the hell is that? Like I can speak firsthand working with an agent. We had a corner run a 473, which is like I guess that's going to come out, that's going to come in at like 84 speed, but still like these corners <laughs> you run a a 465, you ain't going in the first round. I tell you that much. Like Tez Tabor is, is a rare example of a guy who came in at, at like 87 speed with a 4640, but that dude's college tape was incredible. So if you're a first round prospect, I'm telling you right now, you ain't coming in in this range. That's ridiculous. The corners overall are just completely unathletic. They don't match up at all, at all with how even EA's ratings are, let alone mine. You know, these guys can run. These corners can freaking run. That is their, their primary purpose is they are fast. I can tell you that right now. Like Jared Alexander, I'm not sure he's going in the first round based on his college tape, but because he's such a freak, uh, you put that guy in the first round because he can straight up run. Uh, so the archetypes here, uh, these are these are really important. Like their archetypes at cornerback, I think speak volumes in terms of the, the the consistency. With corners, do have a very specific skill set for the most part. So this is I call it the mantlete. Um, really good runner. This is like your Jer Alexander type. Um, Andy Bradley Roby, like just rare athletes. These are typically going to be first, second round picks. You're not going to get a ton of these, if any, in the later rounds, but elite level, like speed, agility, acceleration, good man coverage, but they are going to struggle in press zone, run defense. They're usually lighter players. Uh, and then we've got the press zone corner. There's a lot of these. The Seahawks just set the tone for these Six foot three, six foot two, stiff corners, but good straight line speed, good press zone, run defense. Just look at like Trey Flowers for them right now. It's it's that's the the archetype there that a lot of teams have echoed. Uh, they are going to struggle in man and have poor agility for sure. Um, but there's going to be a lot of these in your draft classes. Uh, then you got the balanced guys, and then slot corners. Uh, these are going to be later rounds, as early as the third round, sure. But a lot of undrafted guys are slot corners. Sixth, seventh round should be these slot corners who have decent speed but really good acceleration agility. They should really either be falling because they're 5'8 or 5'9. A lot of teams have a height cutoff, whether it be 6 feet or 5'10. So they're either falling because of their height, but they actually can play a little bit. They're just going to struggle in some other aspects because of their height, or they're slow. You might have a five foot eleven guy with like eighty seven speed, but has good playmaking instincts. That could be a very realistic fifth, sixth round prospect. Uh, so then we've got safeties. Uh, definitely some important archetypes to talk about here. Uh, you're gonna have your center fielders. These are becoming more rare. Uh, it was more traditional a few years ago, I think, to have a few of these every year that are your more rangy center field types. But we're getting less of these every year. You know, Jesse Bates was really the only true center fielding uh, safety in this class, really. I mean, there's some guys that can play it, but, you know, this is a specific player who's not going to play well in the box, not great in press coverage or man uh, or uh, run defense. These are high zone, high speed defenders. They're going to be a little smaller than your strong safeties. Uh, so this is the next archetype. This is kind of the... Obviously, you're not going to make them as good as Cam Chancellor, but that's the model here is the bigger safety, slower, but 
um, are going to be really good in press and run defense and big hitting and all that good stuff. Your nickelback, this is essentially the slot corner. Um, the guys who fell because they're shorter or slower. Uh, but these are versatile players. They're good in man, zone, probably a little lower in press, but that's fine. And then they, they are going to be good in run defense. Go easy on the block shed for the smaller guys, but, you know, good tackling, pursuit, strip ball traits, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then you've got your balanced guys who can do a little bit of everything. So, man, that's it. I don't even know how long this video is going to be. Um, but I hope that was interesting, whether you're going to take this and create a class or just want to see this kind of mind dump of how I evaluate NFL talent. This doesn't just apply to um, Madden. This is a, a real mind dump of someone that has <laughs> started to make a career out of evaluating draft classes and stuff. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Do hit the like button. Um, that's really all I can ask. Uh, but if you do want to go and create classes, like I said, uh, that would be awesome. That would be absolutely awesome for everyone. Uh, take your time. And I'm really excited to see the turnout for this stuff. Uh, so that's it. Uh, class is over. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Peace out. We'll see you next time.